In front of a majestic backdrop of mountains, the city of Denver has mushroomed into a thriving metropolis. Sports plays a big part of Denver's magic, and today it's gymnastics that's in the spotlight, featuring 1988 Olympic all-around finalist Lance Ringnall. Brandy Johnson finished best among the all-around competitors at the Olympic Games. She is one of America's best. And the best gymnast from the Big 8, Patrick Kirksey. He finished first in the all-around competition at the recently held Big 8 Championships. The winner of the 1989 Mixed Pairs, Wendy Bruce, teamed up with Li Jing of China for an unbeatable combination. And Conrad Borsinger, currently in ninth place on the national team, is in from Stanford, and he's looking to climb in the rankings. This is head-to-head -head competition. Today, Karen Tierney challenges Brandy Johnson. Brandy impressed everyone by finishing as the best all-around performer at the American Cup. On the men's side, we begin with Lance Ringnall versus Jeff Lutz. Lance Ringnall finished second at the American Cup, only a Soviet placed higher. The mining days of Denver are over, but today the quest for gold continues. ESPN, the Total Sports Network. And the United States Gymnastics Federation presents... the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Today it is show number one. Karen Turney challenges Brandy Johnson while Lance Reno goes against Jeff Lutz. Welcome to the Denver Coliseum, where the gymnastics faithful are in store for a real treat in the world of gymnastics. Hello, everyone. I'm Leander Riley, and this challenge that we've set forth for you is going to be an interesting format. If you don't know anything about gymnastics, it doesn't matter. What you have to keep track of are two gymnasts competing against each other head to head, and you in your living room can figure out who's better. The one who's better will move on to the next round. All right, right now, let me introduce one of the best gymnasts in the United States, Olympic gold medalist, Bart Connor. And Bart, what do you think of this format, this head-to-head -head challenge? I like this format, and I think the gymnasts like it as well, because as we've seen in the past, an important international competition, consistency is the key. This type of format really encourages the athletes to be consistent, or they won't make it to the next round. All right, let's talk about the gymnasts in our first round. This is the very first show, the very first challenge. It's Lance Ringnall against Jeff Lutz. Lance is very strong right now. In fact, he is the guy on the U.S. national team. He's consistent, he's strong, and he's very mature as a competitor, and he's only 18 years old. He's going up against Jeff Lutz, who has some outstanding quality. He's great on the rings, he's great on vaulting and high bar, but he'll have his hands full against uh, Lance today. All right, whoever hits, they're the one that's going to survive. Let's talk about the women's side right now. It's Karen Tierney, Tierney going up against Brandy Johnson. Brandy, so tough, so strong from that American Cup. And she is really hot right now. We saw it a few years back when Mary Lou Retton caught fire. We've seen it with Tracy Talavera. We've seen it with Phoebe Mills. Well, Brandy is the girl right now that's really on top of her game. Karen is a strong junior. She's now in the senior ranks, but she's in the big leagues today, and she's going to have a tough competition with Brandy. Hey, you brought up Mary Lou Retton. When she was in this meet, she played giant killer. She was not expected to win, but she did win this meet back in 1981. All right, let's go to a commercial break. When we come back, we will begin the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Now we are going to be following the Olympic rotation and men compete on the floor exercise event first. Lance Ringo, 18 years old from Albuquerque, New Mexico. You recently saw him here on ESPN in the Mixed Pairs competition. He was teamed with Brandy Johnson. They finished ninth in the all-around. Lance is certainly a very bright young gymnast. He's a strong tumbler, and he uses his acrobatic background, and he carries that over to the other events, particularly like the vault and the high bar. But you'll see how powerful and explosive he is on his opening run. The first move was called a one and a half twisting one and three. He did it in laid out position. These are flared circles to the splits. Press to a handstand. 
Look at the flexibility in the straddle position. Lance looks very strong and tends to be a little bulky, and yet it's amazing how flexible he is. He doesn't look like he'd be as loose as he actually is. Front step out through the double fold, punch front one and a quarter. He was a little <laughs> short on that, but he really handled it. Yeah, I thought he was going to not make it, but pulled it out. Head spring front. The guy can do everything. You watch him practice, and he can do just about every trick in the book. And it's fun to see when he composes routines, because he says, well, today I'll do this routine, and tomorrow I'll do that one. Nice high. Tuck double back and short a little bit. He didn't get his arms nice up, but he was high. A hop on the end for Lance Ringnall as he completes his first apparatus. Again, six events for the men, four events for the women, just as it is in the Olympic Games. Let's take another look at his floor exercise routine. He was kind of coasting here a little bit. He's going to do a front step out. Right through. He's a little short there. This is a double twist. And watch this. Punch front, one and a quarter. And he barely <laughs> pulls that around. But that's how talented this guy is. He can pull just about anything out. Here's the tuck double back. You'll notice he's very high. He doesn't quite get his arms up quick enough. And so he's high, but he's short of rotation. And he has to take one good hop on the landing. Otherwise, a good exercise for Lance. We have two judges at each event. The score will be posted shortly, and of course, score we'll relay that now, information to you. Five, five. And the score that we have for that floor exercise routine is a 9.55. That's Lance Ringnall on the floor exercise event. He has five rotations remaining, but his competitor now has a standard to achieve. And Jeff Lutz has heard that score, 9.55, and he knows exactly what he has to do in order to get the good score. Jeff Lutz hails from Houston, Texas. He's five feet five inches tall. There's an interesting story about Jeff, actually. He was at the University of Oklahoma on their collegiate program. And in December this year, it was reported that in the Oklahoma media that he had a career-ending wrist injury, and he actually left the University of Oklahoma, went to Houston. After a good opening run of a full in and a second tumbling run of a triple full, he showed good strength in that straddle plunge, front front combination. As I mentioned earlier, he left Oklahoma University and they thought he had a career ending injury, but obviously it wasn't because he looks very strong here on the floor. He's a very quick, springy tumbler. Last pass, tuck double back, really nice. Nice tumble. He doesn't have that relaxed expression on his face. I think Lance was a little bit more relaxed out there, but overall, he was very powerful. Well, there's no question there's a lot of pressure on, on, on Jeff because of going up against the number one guy in the U.S. right now. Round off back handspring, good arm reach, which was a little better than Lance Ringnall's dismount, actually. He had good height and better rotation. Good clean landing. We have the score now for Jeff Lutz. Again, 955 was the score that Lance Ringnall had. 9540 is the score for Jeff Lutz. So right now, Lance Ringnall holds a slight edge after one rotation. We'll be back with more, but first this. Welcome back to the 1989 U.S. Challenge. Through one rotation, right now Lance Ringnold has a .15 lead over his challenger, Jeff Lutz. Again, it is the winner after six rotations that will survive to compete in round number two, and they will face the winner of Kyle Lozano against Jorge Garcia. Right now we are going to begin with our women's competition. The women begin with the vault. You are looking at Brandy Johnson as she prepares her warm-up. We had a chance to talk with her earlier. Now, you will recall that Brandy Johnson won the American Cup. Wasn't that long ago that she proved herself to be one of the best American gymnasts around. She outdistanced Olyeya Dudnik of the Soviet Union. Olyeya Dudnik was considered to be a favorite, but now it's Brandy Johnson who carries the crown. She talked to us about being number one. As in the title of being um, the top gymnast in America, I will gladly take on that title, but... Um, 
I just let my gymnastics, I don't focus on being the number one gymnast in the United States. I just focus on doing my routines the best I can. If I happen to do that, then that's fine. And Brandy Johnson, if you saw the opening of our telecast, she was the top all-around finisher at the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, Korea. So she is really positioning herself to be America's premier gymnast. She is just 15 years of age. You can see her height and weight, and she competes in Florida. This is her first of two vaults. She'll take the best score of the two. <laughs> what can you say? She is so strong. In fact, she's very well known for her powerful tumbling and vaulting skills, but she's really developed into a really fine all-around gymnast. This is a Yurchenko vault laid out with a full, good push, good clean form in the air, and an excellent landing. What can you say about that? If you were her coach, what would you be saying to her when she does her second ball? To tell you the truth, she's more powerful than that. She didn't get the rebound and the block off the horse that she normally gets. Although it was an outstanding vault, she can even do it better. She is coached by Kevin and Rita Brown of Brown's Gymnastics. Her score for that first vault was 9.925. Now, women's gymnastics is the higher of the two vault that will, that will count. They are not averaged together. So she can better that mark of 9.925, which is going to be tough to do. The score is 9.925. She says she can't do that. <laughs> she, can do she has posted the number up by where she's vaulting, 4.91. That means that she's going to do the same vault again. A perfect vault here, of course, can score a perfect 10 because this vault is valued at a 10. Some vaults aren't valued at maximum scores of 10. Some are only 9, 7, 9, 8, 9, 9 maximum. This can be a perfect 10. That was bad. Oh, one hop on the landing, but she had good height and much better distance from the horse. She is so powerful. A congratulatory hug from our coach, Kevin Brown. It's the same vault. She's going to round off here, go back onto the horse. A little better block, but certainly much more distance from the horse. But you can see one big hop is going to be a deduction. Not a big deduction, though, because this is still incredible stuff. Once again, round off. You see she goes backwards onto the horse, layout full. I've seen her do it better. That vault received a score of 9.825. And the first vault, which was higher, the 9.925 is the one that will count. And that really sets up a tough, tough challenge for Karen Tierney. You should add that that was a record in uh, the single elimination format. Earlier, we had a chance to speak with young Karen Tierney. She's just 15 years of age. She hasn't had much gymnastics experience, but she spoke about this format. Um, I think it will show who the strongest gymnasts are and what they're able to do by competing each day. And how do you think you're going to fare? I think I'll do pretty good. I'm paired with Brandy Johnson, and she's the best in the United States, so it's, it's <laughs> going to be kind of a great challenge. And a tough challenge it is with the record-setting performance of Brandy Johnson. Again, the earlier record was 9.90. It was held by Diane Durham back in 1982. She had set the standard for this meet. And now that record has been broken. Let's see what Karen Terry can do. This is going to be a vault called Tucked Queer Vault. Pretty nice. That's better than I saw her warming it up. She has to be pretty good. Her coach is Stormy Eaton. You can see him there in the background. This is a vault where she's going to do a handspring onto the horse, going straight, half turn, and then a tucked backflip. Very high. One little problem on the landing. She'll try and stick that landing, of course, on the second vault. She'll be doing the same okay. vault again. Handspring. Good, clean form. That is a very difficult vault to hold Score good, tight leg form on, but she did a good job. And the score for the first ball is 9.65. Once again, she's going to do the tucked queer ball. Same vault, which has a value of 9.9. So try to stick it. Good job. How about that? Good block that time, good clean form, and that time she found the landing. So that should get a little bit higher score than the 9.65 she received for her first vault. She has good speed here, and right here, boom, a little better block gets her a little higher so she can drop straight down on the landing rather than over rotate. Different from what we've seen Brandy do. Brandy went backwards onto the horse. Karen, Score four, Karen, on her horse, handspring, half turn, tuck back, and she's pleased with that one. 
And it is 9.625. And that ball was scored a little bit less than the first ball. It was a 9.625. The first one was a 9.650. It is the first ball that will count to the score. Again, the score she wanted to beat was 9.925. We are continuing now with the men's rotation. We will send you back over to our competitors, Jeff Lutz and Lance Ringo. They are now at the Purple Horse. We're looking at Jeff Lutz. If there's one event where a wrist injury is going to show up for Jeff Lutz, it could be here on the pommel horse because there is an incredible amount of strain on the wrist because at any given all, oh, right away, right away, he had trouble there. You can see that he grabbed his wrist. Yes, it looks like he's it's trying wrong. not to favor it, but he might have just pinched it just wrong. On the pommel horse, of course, you're supporting just on the hands, and you're alternating back and forth. So at any given moment, you're only on one hand at any given moment. So you're switching back and forth. And I'm sure, yeah, he's having a real hard time here. It's unfortunate because you know he's in pain, and he hasn't been able to train on the pommel horse sufficiently to get prepared for this competition. And unfortunately, the pommel horse is an event where you just get no relief. I mean, he can certainly put the weight on the other hand, but that's for a split second. He just gets no chance to rest him. There's a handstand on the end into the middle. You can see here he's doing single leg work. Those are called scissors. Yeah, this is awfully tough on him. Oh, wow, that's a pretty nice dismount, considering he's at that level. Yeah, that was a hop to a handstand on the end. That's tough stuff. Jeff Lutz with a couple of falls, tough break. Right from the beginning, he didn't get a good solid push, and you know he's favoring his wrist. And Palm Horse is a very difficult event anyway. I think it's the most difficult of all of the men's events. It's very tricky, and when you're having wrist problems, you're already asking for trouble. Although he did have trouble early, this is a really nice move, a hop to a handstand on the end. It takes good swing and a tremendous amount of strength. Good finish. Jeff Lutz, five feet five inches tall, born in Houston, Scores Texas. Currently lives Lutz, in Fort Worth, Texas. Old. Wants to go back to the University of Oklahoma and continue training there. And the score, unfortunately, for Jeff Lutz is a 7.8. That's just about going to run him out of this head to head format because Lance uh, has a little breathing room now, certainly. Next up, Lance Ringgold. Lance Ringgold. Lance has a really interesting dismount. He does a backflip off the horse. It's pretty interesting to see. You're talking about the breathing room that he needs. 7.7 .7 is all he needs up here, and obviously he'll do better than that unless he has a couple of major falls. Back more mount. A good extension of the body, nice handwork as he travels across the horse. And we cut what we call longitudinal travels. Oh, a little trouble there. He's struggling a little bit on the, one of those travels to the end. There's a handstand in the middle, a little short. He does that a little higher normally. Oh, <laughs> had trouble on the scissor. That's an easy move. You shouldn't give up points there. And there's that dismount. Ah, piped back off. Interesting. Caught by, yeah, caught by surprise. Even though you warned us, it was a unique dismount. That's he really had a little trouble there. He, uh, he's doing these travels. You can see here he reaches up, and he's going to go all the way across the horse in a major form break there. But he's a tough kid. He really pulls this out and fights to get back in position. Do you think he over-relaxed after Jeff Lutz's it, it's, it's possible. It's certainly a big finish right. here with the bike back. Right. Here. That's a really neat move. There's only a few guys that do that. None of them do it in a pike position. It's a, it's a unique way to get off the pommel horse. Well, at the 1988 Winter Nationals held in Colorado Springs, Lance Ringel finished first in the all-around. So he likes it here in Colorado. And for his pommel horse team, he receives a 9.60. He's easily ahead of Jeff Lutz.
coverage of the 1989 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge continues now. The women have completed one rotation, the men have completed two. Let's take a look first at the standings for the women. After vaulting, Brandy Johnson leads Karen Tierney 9.925 to 9.650. Again, these are cumulative totals. On the men's side now, they have already competed on two apparatus of six. Lance Ringnold leads Jeff Lutz 19.15. Jeff Lutz, of course, had a fall over Commodores. That's why his score reflects a 17.2. Now we are on the still rings apparatus. Lance Ringnold against Jeff Lutz. Lance Ringnold will be up Lance first. Ringnold. At the Junior Pacific Alliance, he tied for third on this event. That was in Colorado Springs in 1988. Lance is a very strong competitor. He's good on vaulting. He's great on high bar. He's great on floor. If there's one area where Lance needs improvement, and he knows it, it's here on the rings. He's trying to beef up some of his strength work and his control. He opened up with a beautiful mount. Back kip around across. There's some good swing, but see, he needs to fight those handstands. He has to hold a good, solid body line. You can see he can swing like, like anything. And he can hold the cross, but the rings are swinging a little bit. He's not quite in the kind of control, but oh, once like again, that. he can do everything in the book, this guy. Uh -huh. Right here is a move called a hollow back. He needs to continue up and hold that nice and tight. You can see he's struggling just a little bit to squeeze out the handstand position. He can do all the tricks. It's just a little polish on rings, and he'll be incredible there. That's Lance that's Ringo, that's appropriately that's named, that's doing so well in the still rings this day. Lance in his second year now. Now there's an interesting situation here. He has a black background and a black ceiling. That must be hard to get your bearings. Yeah, he told me it was a little hard to spot some of the skills, especially the dismounts. He does some good work on those double whippets or gutsugis. It was invented by, not gutsugis, yamawakis. There's a lot of funny names in gymnastics. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> that's a move called a delchev or a crescin. It was invented by two guys at the same time, so nobody knows exactly what to call it. This is his dismount, a giant over the top to a layout double. He really is incredible when he's airborne because he has tremendous air sense, like a cat. And the score he received for that routine is 9.65. Our next athlete up is 20 years old. Now the man who can afford to make no more mistakes is Jeff Butts. All he can do at this point is try to hit cleanly and hope that Lance Ringdahl maybe doesn't hit his ball or something and get back into the competition. Let's He's watch. down by almost two full points at this juncture. Let's watch this exercise and try and point out some of the requirements. There's one of the requirements, a strength move right off the bat. He did a kip to an L, L cross pull out to a plan. There's some really great strength moves. Back to an L and a hollow back press to a handstand. That's a requirement. You have to go to a handstand once from a press or a strength move and once from a swing as he did there, a giant swing to a handstand. a full twisting top double back. Really nice clean dislike. He had good strength early on. He didn't have as much swing as we saw from Lance Ringel. And the judges want to see a complete exercise that has good strength elements as well as several really good swing elements. He could have used more swing elements in this routine. There's the front giant. Good lock arm position as he catches it in handstand. I felt he kept the rings a little steadier. Yeah, he standing. was a little bit more in control. Of course, he wasn't doing as many swinging skills where you can really get in trouble. Mm -hmm. His dismount was excellent. A full twisting, tuck, double back. Good point. We wait now for the score for Jeff Lutz. The score is now being posted for Jeff Lutz. He received a 9.60. 9.60. 9 Again, just comparing it head to head with the still ring performance of Lance Ringnold. It was 9.65 for Ringnold. 960 for Lutz. Let's go back over to the women now. We, look, we are looking at Karen Tierney. She is getting ready to mount the uneven parallel bars. Karen is 15 years old. Straddle over to the high bar. She casts right to handstand. It's a giant bent arm problem. To a reverse hack, a good release move. One of the requirements for the girls, they have to do a release move that's of B value or better. The moves, of course, are A, B, C, and D. Right back up to handstand on the bar, the top bar, giant over the top, a little short, but she nails the landing on the tuck down. 
So that's a problem with form, some bent arms in the Giants, not as explosive as you'll, hit, you'll see from Brandy Johnson, who's up next. How much does it hurt her to have such an arched back on some of her giant swings? Well, in terms of overall impression, of course, the judges see that there are little form deductions, there's a loose body line, and of course those take away from the overall presentation and impression that the exercise gives. This is the giant here. So you can see a little arch, a little bend. She needs to be a little cleaner there, but it's a good tuck double back, and she does a nice job fighting the landing and not taking a step. There you see her uneven parallel bar score is 9.60, setting the stage now for Brandy Johnson to try to better that mark. In the single elimination format, at the end of the all-around competition for the women, that's four apparatus, and for the men, it is six. The gymnast with the best all-around total will survive to compete in what we call round number two. The idea, of course, is to win it all. Now watch the power in this routine. Look at how quick she goes to the handstand. Tremendously high. Reverse hect, right to a front, to a cross change grip. See, she's very tight and very explosive, and that polish and that good, strong, powerful line is very impressive to the judges. Giant half, half, another giant to a really high tuck double. What a star. That's a good contrast in two dismounts that were performed with a little bit more explosiveness the second time around. Now, on that release move, she looked a little close to me. She did have, she was a little close, but you'll see there's a reason for that. This first move is just off the ceiling. She casts right up to a really rock solid handstand. Look at the tap and the tremendous height as she sails backward over the bar in a move called Reverse Hector or Tkachev. Then inside there, she does a straddle front. You have to be close because you don't have a tremendous amount of swing and the low bar's in your way, so you can't get too far away from the bar in order to make the regrasp. But look at the giant, really good form, and she's so powerful, she disguised this tuck double back. And the score for Brandy Johnson on the uneven parallel bars, 9.825. She continues her domination of Karen Tierney, who received a 9.6 for the same apparatus. We'll be back. Welcome back. We are now at the halfway point between Lance Ringnold's and Jeff Lutz's challenge here at the U.S. Challenge of 1989. Lance Ringnold holds a comfortable lead of two points, 28.8 to 26.8. On the women's side, Brandy Johnson over Karen Tierney. The margin's a little bit closer, about five-tenths of a point, 19.7 to 19.25. And we are moving now to that deadly event, as I like to call it, the balance beam, the place where you don't get a break. You can fall off just standing there. Brandy has been compared so many times to Mary Lou Retton in terms of her explosiveness. And they have something in common, certainly on beam. They're so powerful, they tend to just go flying off the beam. Brandy has gotten her beam in control, and she was very solid at the recent American Cup. Let's see if she can do it here. I love her dance element and her arm positions. And if you're a young gymnast at home, take a look at how she finishes each move, each hand gesture. Everything is intentional. There are no accidents in this balance beam routine. Here comes a tumbling pass for an acro series. Flip-flop, flip-flop, layout, nice job. Now the gymnasts have to show an acro series, which is mostly the tumbling elements. They have to show a gymnastic series, which is the dance elements, the leaps, the jumps, and the turns. And they have to show a mixed series, which includes a dance element or a gymnastic element and an acro element. Nice high punch front. Isn't she powerful? so steady. Another thing you can watch for is how often she works on her toes. Look at that swing through layout. There's your dismount, round off, tuck double. Sticks the landing. She is getting so mature and so solid that even the beam doesn't scare her anymore. A beautiful performance by Brandy Johnson on the balance beam. This is that acro series. It's flip-flop, flip-flop to a layout tremendously high. No bobble at all. 
There's a lot of girls that do punch fronts, but very few of them do it this well. Look at the rotation and the height. She lands standing almost straight up. And of course, the dismount was a round off, tuck double back. Still one of the tougher dismounts being done in the world. Round off, tuck double. Good form, good rotation, and a good landing. And the score she received 9.825. And there goes the record by Lisa Zoss. Now you're looking at Karen Tierney. Well, she knows the beam is a lot because Karen has stayed up there. And this is also Karen's favorite event. So I know she's uh, looking forward to, to the mount, which is right here. Round off, one-handed back hands bring on. Very difficult and original opening skill. There's a full turn, which is a requirement. One of the things the judges are looking for. Very difficult side leap. She had some trouble there. That'll be a deduction of probably two, maybe three tenths. Well, what makes it so difficult is she has to take her eyes off the beam to turn sideways and leap, and she's got nothing to focus on. Round off layout. Oh, she's in trouble there, but she fights it and stays on. Good job. She was a little shorter rotation. She did a good job bringing it back on the beam. There's an aerial. She seems to have bobbles on those. Acro skills. Wait one second. Once again, this is interesting to note the comparison ride. between Karen and Brandy. We saw Brandy perform like this just a couple of years ago, and she has matured into a very confident competitor. I expect the same will happen to Karen. She can do all the big tricks. Look at that swing through layout, just like we saw Brandy do earlier. But she needs to be just a little steadier in competition, and that really comes with experience, and that's one of the reasons that they're here. Nice switch leg split leap. Three leaps in a row. That's a series of gymnastics elements that the judges need to see. A round off, tuck double. Oh! She's More than anything, she's probably just a little disappointed. This switch leg side leap is really a hard move. And she does a good job at staying on the beam, although that's gonna be a major deduction, I'm sure, of at least three tenths. She did a good job at not giving away five tenths and falling off. Here she was way short of rotation. She bends her knees, you see there, finally, to keep control and to lower her center and stay on the beam. Johnson, she got ready for the round off tuck double. She doesn't get a really solid punch off the beam. And of course, when you're in the air, you know that you're low and slow. There's not much you can do, but she's all right. Let you know who is the leader in each of the pairings. Score for Karen Tierney, 8.55. She gets the score of 8.75. We're over Randy a ball now, and we're going to be performing one ball each. This is Jeff Lutz. The first that score is 8.55 for Karen Tierney. 8.55. Now we are moving over back to the men's competition. One ball only for men. This is a great event for Jeff Lutz. Good job at trying to keep it in line because you tend to go a little crooked on that ball. We'll have my so judgment as well. 9.50. Now Lance Ringo. And there his wrist looked strong again. And he did have trouble on the pommel horse and he did have an injured wrist. He looked strong on the vault. Now you're looking at Lance Ringo. He too will vault. Position. See, you can see he's way short, but he does a good job at not slapping his hands down 
and fighting the land. That's one of the things that's going to make Lance a great international so star. Right now, he's fighting is just about anything I can see. He was really low. And yet he's not going to give away any major points. Now we get our one minute warm up period. Well, let's and take Lance a look at the Lance now it's waiting for his score. It is at 9.45 for Lance Ringo on the vault. He loses technically to Jeff Lutz. Welcome back. We are about to begin our final rotation for the women. After three events, Brandy Johnson leads Karen Tierney 29.575 to 27.80, the difference being .775. On the men's side, Lance Ringnall over Jeff Lutz 38.25 to 36.3, almost two points difference between these two gymnasts, but the men have two rotations remaining. And you're looking at the parallel bars, an event that's near and dear to you, Bart Connor. <laughs> Parallel bars was always uh, the most fun for me. When I was nine or ten years old, it just seemed like something I picked up very easily. Uh, in, as opposed to rings of pommel horse, which just about killed me. But look at Lance's mount. He mounts straight in with a plange on the end, peach straddle cut, giant on the end. Look at all this really interesting and unique work on the end. And then he swings into the middle, showing a really nice reverse stutz back toss. This is a great routine so far. Diamidoff right to the top. Lance has improved a great deal here at the Winter Nationals in December here in Denver. He was a little sloppy on this event, but he's just ripping through this routine. And a pike double. Great exercise. That's the best parallel bars I've seen Lance do. Lance Ringnold is 18 years old. Lance shows a lot of promise for the U.S. future. Typical of Lance Ringnold's style. He does every trick in the book in the same exercise. He did a great Diamidoff, front uprise, swing pirouette. He had some really interesting work at the beginning of his exercise, and he is a real star when it comes to dismounts. Pike double back, he pulls that around. One short hop on the landing. A very difficult routine, and probably the cleanest I've ever seen Lance perform. And it gets a great score, too. 9.75 for the parallel bar routine of Lance Ringo. If you are interested in the record, it is held by Phil Cahoy in this meet, 9.85. So the record really was not in jeopardy just yet. Now you're looking at Jeff Lutz. Jeff Lutz, reminding you, had trouble on the pommel horse. He had a severe wrist injury, and we knew that was going to bother him on the pommel horse, and he did have a couple of falls. And the wrist is important here, too, Bart. Yeah, there's no question this is a similar supporting event like the pommel horse, but there isn't the same kind of twisting element on the parallel bars that you get on the pommel horse. So, so far, he has shown that when he's straight on top of the support of the wrist, he's not going to have too much pain. This is a good exercise so far. Pike double back, good dismount. He really didn't have a nice flowing routine though that we saw from Lance, who really blasted through, showing a lot of strength, but also really nice flowing swing elements. This was a little choppier, although it was still a good exercise. Do you hold your breath when you do on the parallel bars? <laughs> I don't know that I've ever thought about it, but uh, if you do, I'm sure you'd pass out by the sixth or seventh trick. You gotta bleed, breathe somewhere in there. I saw him breathing in the handstand real hard. That's why I asked that. I thought, you know, do you hold your breath for the hard stuff and then uh, I think yeah. you tend to take your breath when you're when you're in a handstand when you can relax for a second. But when you're doing a pike double back like that dismount, uh, uh, your your mouth is closed. Sometimes your even your eyes are closed, <laughs> and you're biting your lip too. <laughs> so Jeff Lutz waits score for the score on the parallel bars. They have just announced it, that it is about two tenths of a point less than what Lance Next Reno up, received. Nine versus the nine seven five for Lance. One rotation remains for the men, and this is the final rotation now for the women. As you look at Karen Tierney, she is challenging Brandy Johnson in this head-to-head -head format. Really clean pike double back. Although that wasn't one of the more difficult mounts being done, it's really clean, and that counts for a lot of the judges' points. They take in consideration the overall presentation, good, clean form, and always in control. Whip back, through to a double four. Oops, the pole fell off her hairdo. 
interesting dramatic pause in the music. on the floor exercise. This is a really nice, clean pike double back. She blasts across there. She's moving pretty fast. Round off back handspring. Good lift, good clean form. Little separation right there. She needs to keep her legs together a little longer before she spreads to open for the landing. The second run was a round off whip, flip flop, flip flop through to a double full. The judges are looking for three tumbling series. We saw the opening, the second run. Here's the dismount. Tuck double back. She doesn't quite get her arms up quick enough, so as you can see, she is really cranking that flip. And she does a good job at not allowing her hands to slap down, which of course would have been a major reduction. The score is 9.5 for Karen Tierney. And unless Brandy Johnson makes some major, major mistakes, she's going to be the winner of this first round. Why do you see this routine? She is so explosive. It's incredible. of Mary Lou Retton when you watch this tumbling run. Mary Lou did a similar pass as well. Round off, back handspring to a full in. Look at the power. She pikes this, keeping her legs straight as she pulls around, and she's so strong she can always put those landings right where she needs them. Score for Brandy Johnson, nine. I like this pass because it's good combination work. Round off, whip, whip, back handspring, tuck double. She was a little crooked on that tuck double, and yet you'd never know it. 9.90, the score for Brandy Johnson. She is the winner. She has defeated Karen Tierney. We'll be back with more. We still have one rotation left for the men. Welcome back. The scores have been tabulated, and Brandy Johnson has indeed defeated Karen Tierney. Brandy Johnson will now advance to face either Carol Ulrich or Margaret Hewlett in the next round of competition. 39.475 to 37.30. Now on the men's side, they still have one rotation remaining. Lance Ringnold is out in front, 48.00 to 45.85. So Lance Ringnold has a comfortable lead as he heads into the high bar. This is Jeff Lutz already up. This is one of Jeff's best events. He opens with a stem, and those are called eagle giant swings. Stalder, named, invented by Joseph Stalder from the Swiss team years ago. And there's a really nice release combination. A reverse hect to a ginger. 
He has a big dismount. Look at the speed as he cranks up in this. Triple back, easily done. Oh! I'm so surprised he opened up early because in the warm-ups, he totally skied that and actually over-rotated. I guess perhaps he was accommodating his uh, over-rotation in the warm-ups and he thought he needed to open up. This is a great combination. Reverse hecked right to a Ginger, invented by Eberhard Ginger from the West German team. Nice combination of release elements. Now he has great speed and he way over rotated this in the warm ups. And I think what happened here is he's way up there, he's cranking around three. He opened up a little earlier than he did in the warm ups, hoping to compensate for what happened. And of course, when you put your hands down, it's a major deduction. You can see he cowboys his legs, he pulls them apart to help increase his rotational speed. And yet he just opened up a little too early. He trailed by 2.15. The score for that routine, 9.20. And that is how Jeff Lutz will end this 1989 U.S. Challenge. Lance Ringnall will now perform his final rotation, his final event, which is also the high bar, as he survives to compete against either Jorge Garcia or Kyle Asano in the next rotation. Once again, this is one of Lance's best events. He has good releases, great releases, in fact, and he has a big dismount. Pirouette to a one-arm giant swing. Watch this combination. Reverse head with his legs together. Right to a ginger, and that was hot. Oh, almost got in trouble on that. Pirouette backward. Did a good job at fighting the handstand and not breaking too much of the rhythm. rhythm. Continues with eagle giant swings, hop full pirouette, once again doing every trick in the book. Now watch this dismount. A laid out, double twisting, double back. Five feet seven and a half inches tall, and he does a flyaway move like that and regrasp with his legs together. A lot of people do the reverse hecked element, but very few can do it with the feet together. And then in combination, watch this, feet together, as he goes over backward, and he taps right through to a ginger, which is incredibly high. It's hard to get that much height when you do those moves back to back. It's not like he's five two either. He's kind of a lengthy fellow. Watch this dismount. It's two flips in the laid out position, and in the second flip, he cranks two twists and makes it easily. In fact, his coach tells me in workouts, he can add one more twist and do a triple twisting double, which we're looking forward to see. 9.80, Lance Ringnold with that score easily defeats Jeff Lutz. We'll be back with a recap of both the men's and women's scoring, but first these messages from our sponsors. Welcome back, the numbers are official. Brandy Johnson has defeated Karen Tierney, 39.475 to 37.3. On the men's side, it was Lance Ringnold over Jeff Lutz, 57.8 to 55.05. And right now, Bart Connor is standing by with our two winners. Both Brandy and Lance did a terrific job today. And Brandy, you said this kind of format made you nervous. Yeah, I was a little bit nervous all the way up until the end. But once I got going, it was all right. You said beam was particularly scary. Yeah, I was really nervous on beam because I watched the person in front of me. And I was first up, so I was really scared. How about you, Lance? You kind of breezed through this first round. Your toughest competition is yet to come. Yes, but it was still pressured up until Pommel Horse is when the biggest score difference came. But as far as pressure, it's a little different when you get to watch your opponent and see how he's doing, because then you can really feel it, and you know exactly what's going on. You like this format? Yeah, I do. You know, it's new. It's a little more nerve-wracking, but it's exciting for the crowd and for us. Well, congratulations to the both of you. Thank you. Leandra? A fine job by Lance Ringno, and a fine job by Brandy Johnson, winners of this first session. field of 24 gymnasts in this 1989 U.S. Gymnastics Challenge is now down to 22 because Lance Ringnold has defeated Jeff Lutz. He'll face the winner of Kyle Asano and Jorge Garcia. On the women's side, it was Brandy Johnson over Karen Tierney. So Tierney and Lutz are out. Brandy Johnson will face the winner of Margaret Eulett against Carol Ulrich. Margaret Eulett and Carol Ulrich, incidentally, will be competing next Friday night here on ESPN. And Bart Connor, your thoughts on the format here of the single elimination? I really like this format because it really stresses consistency. Although Lance Ringnold and Brandy Johnson 
Jackson are heavy favorites here. If they make a mistake, they could be bounced right out of the competition. It's also an exciting opportunity to see some of the new up-and-coming stars of the U.S. program. As you saw on the graphic, there are three rotations of competition. There are now 11 gymnasts remaining for the men, 11 gymnasts remaining for the women. Let me remind you that next week you can watch the U.S. Gymnastics Challenge continue as Kyle Lozano takes out Jorge Garcia. Margaret Eulis will face Carol Ulrich. That is May 12, 8 p.m. Eastern. For Mark Connor, I'm Leander Rade. So long, everyone, from the Denver Coliseum. Congratulations to Lance Ringo and Brandy Johnson.